If I get fiber from fruits and veggies, uh, are nuts and grains necessary? If you get fiber from, from fruits and veggies, does that make nuts and grains necessary? For fiber, no. I believe in fiber as a healthful nutrient, if you want to call it that, a, a healthful thing to eat. Even though it has you know, an optional status as an essential nutrient, I do consider fiber having healthful qualities with or without accounting for things like overall nutrition, that when you add fiber in, people generally speaking have healthier outcomes. If you get sufficient fiber from fruits and vegetables, then you could forego, in principle, nuts and grains for the sake of getting more fiber in. I still consider getting in a wide variety of foods an important thing to do overall. So you still think in any circumstance the wide variety of foods is always going to be a key to success? Yeah, really tough, like really tough to, like you can nitpick the validity, but really from an everyday standpoint, like you can have, I guess, technically speaking, more optimal ways of eating. And to that, I just, I just kind of poo poo, like we got stuff to do, man, you know? Sure. And so to me, if I just like, if I go to the store once a week and I get different stuff every time and and keep the other things in line from a practicality standpoint I think that does it does an okay job could you do better yes you can always do better and if you have an interest of getting the most optimal thing you can do humanly possible then it would probably work better for you to to watch some other video I care more about what problem do we want to solve and how can we keep this going for as long as possible so that we can have lives worth living and if you think that obsessing over how how much selenium you get every day makes your life worth living well then many other I think content creators can cover that sort of material for me I consider nutrition very important it keeps you alive and with all the arguing and hubbub going around that and all the all the research I have done on food and, and nutrition I have come to the same conclusion every time I go through one of those dumpster dives that food keeps you alive and a lot of people try and convince you getting emotional Good grief! Crying over food! I can relate to that. I care about this stuff. How funny. If food keeps you alive and people try to convince you, it kills you. And I will just come back to this over and over. You can hedge your bets by getting a huge variety. Wide variety of foods recommended as the basis for health in every circumstance. Always going to be a default. I have that as a default because we have other constraints. Instead of just the one rule of getting as many foods as you can all the time, we work within the framework of do you get enough protein and calories? Do you get the other nutrients in? Can you stick to it? Do you have decent patterns, etc.? And so within those constraints, or rather within that framework, same difference, okay, within those rules, guidelines, getting variety within those guidelines, I firmly believe covers, covers your basis from a, from a quality of life, a variety, like enjoyment, all sorts of other boxes get checked. I do think that if you want to have the most optimal diet possible on planet Earth in the history of the universe, it would probably consist of mostly artificial things, which again, raises, opens up another can of worms for, for the reasons earlier of like, well, nutrient quality varies between the same foods at different times of the year. And so, and so to get the exact amount of nutrition you want at the exact time in the exact place, well, then it makes a lot of sense for that to get formulated. Okay, and so now we get into a different sort of conversation. Sure. People want options. Optimal. If you want optimal, then you want laboratory. Okay, like you do. We have too much variety in nature already. And so unless you want to stick every single bite of food you take into a mass spectrometer to find out, which gets pretty expensive by the way, that would mean that you have a formulated nutrition, mostly artificial, to get the optimum values. How else can you get exactitude? Potato to potato has variable water constant, blah, blah, blah. So I, I consider the equal opposite of just getting in a bunch of different stuff and get enough of it. Over all. How much protein do I need? Good question. I generally think like people go by poundage. I see it as like 100 grams, 150 grams, 200 grams, 250 grams. <laughs> Basically like you can go by body weight, sex, etc. If you if you care to measure, it really ends up getting close to one of those values. Do I recommend a person try to get in 138.6 grams of protein? No, you would just round up to 150. So it tends to fall into one of those sort of categories of okay, I calculate out that I that I have to I have to. I calculate out that 137 grams the protein makes the most sense for me well then do you end up like cutting your chicken breast to a fraction of a gram to get that much i would say that the cost benefit there gets pretty high so i could say you could generically go by a combination of body weight and hunger the general recommendation of like you know 0.6 to 0.8 grams per pound ends up working out just fine as far as do i get the amino acids that i get and to get the amino acids that you get a high variety of protein sources okay from there if i still feel hungry well then i can lower my carbohydrates 
carbohydrate and lower my fat and jack the protein up more. So I use protein more as like a practical sort of thing to adjust for, for hunger and have that sort of minimum as, you know, just to under a gram of protein per pound and then round, you know, to the nearest 25 essentially, just to make your life simpler. If this was helpful, you probably want to know how fast you can get jacked. So watch this video next.